to order the Dearborn Board of Education regular meeting for February 13th, 2017. Roll call. Trustee Bazzi? Here. Trustee Barry? Here. Trustee Hamoud? Here. Trustee Lane is absent. Trustee Mead? Here. Trustee Petlichkoff here. Trustee Thorpe? Here. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Ms. Rita Rauch, principal of Nowland School, will introduce students who will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, President Bazzi, Dr. Maleko, and members of the board. Uh, it is my honor to be able to present to you tonight our students from Nowland Elementary School. Um, I will have Dominic Colazzo. Come on up, Dominic. Margaret Karskadian, Amira El Hamoud, Liz Elizabeth Woolley, and Matthew Bundes. Come on up, Matthew. favorite part <laughs> yeah next item on the agenda superintendent's update agenda items so I do have a couple uh, that I'd like to mention uh, one is directly related to agenda item uh, and the other is they're all financial and I do have mr. Tom wall here as well um, our business director so one of the things that uh, on the agenda just about the debt fund and the refunding that we went through that we were authorized to the board that we've refunded some of the bonds that is going to ultimately um, save tax taxpayers 3.6 million dollars so I think that's a real positive thing yeah. and so I just wanted to point that out and it is agenda item and so that's uh, you know showing how the board and administration are, are fiscally responsible and really working with the money and and just a reminder that we've finished the bond the last bond on time and under budget so it's really a positive so I thought that was something that uh, we should highlight with that and this is not necessarily directly related as an agenda item but I just since we're in the financial I might as well mention that you know we're looking at our fund balance to go up um, this year tentatively of, of course things um, as we move forward and the board has given me you know direction within my goals about increasing the fund balance now there's some different reasons that it's occurred but we are looking at adding to the fund balance this year uh, four million over four million dollars Part of which is because we did have the sale of the Howe property that uh, the board went for, and we had $2.4 million there. We also have um, additional surplus because of some of the general fund and the hiring. So although we've hired 41 new teachers and other staff, sometimes they don't start right away. So when you budget for the full year, what ends up happening is that uh, there are some savings uh, uh, actualized there because they may start later into the year, even though you've budgeted a full salary. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. And so we're looking at a fund balance that'll um, come up to 8.5%. Uh, uh, when we, a few years ago we started, we were just under 5%, so we've already moved forward on that. Um, I can also tell you that there are, will be some, it's somewhat tentative because we also have some costs that come in like buses, um, you know, that we look every year, we look to replace some buses you know to re renew our fleet and this year we did have one that we had an accident with the fire and so there's some insurance picking up but we're also looking to add one more bus to this year's budget and it is in the the budget that's been um, 
brought forward by Mr. Wall. And then just a, a couple other things on budget issues. Uh, you know, most of the bond money will be totally uh, spent by the end of this year. The last, the very last thing that we have to finish within the project was the ASC with some of the renovations here with HR and allowing for room within, by moving some of the offices back here, we're uh, actually freeing up classroom space in the schools, specifically at the Heights campus uh, to help the Berry Center. And so the only thing after that that will be remaining from the bond uh, is gonna be a technology, some of the technology funding, but some of that was done specifically because as you purchase technology, it becomes out of date within a year. So uh, Mr. Patterson, the team uh, deliberately want to uh, delay the purchase so it goes over you know, a several year process. So I just wanted to point these things out. Uh, we don't have any official presentation on the budget today, but Mr. Wall and I thought it'd be important things to talk about today. And he said he's available if any board trustees or anybody had any questions, he's happy you know, to, an to answer those questions. Uh, a couple other agenda items I just have. Um, want to congratulate, we have a few uh, retirees. So I want to congratulate uh, Wafa Amar, over 25 years of service. Muna Shami, over 28 years of service, and Heidi Abadi, 19 years of service. So we wanna congratulate them and thank them for the years of service for Dearborn Public Schools. Again, we appreciate the work they did to help our students and we wish them all the best with their future endeavors. Thank you. Any non-agenda items? Yes, I do have a few there and I do have uh, a few things to get to today, but I can tell you that as far as, you know, we've worked out the agenda, we have two presentations today, so we are cutting the time a little. Uh, so I wanna just make a few recognitions. Uh, last week was counseling week uh, nationally, so we wanna recognize our counselors in Dearborn schools and all the people that help, uh, uh, you know, our students. We appreciate the work they do. And that's one area that we are looking to enhance uh, moving forward, but we just wanna say that we appreciate, and when I say enha enhance through staffing, and other things with the model, but we do appreciate the work they do. I also want to uh, mention that I want to congratulate a few schools, but I want to preface it today because we're going to have Dr. Patterson uh, on the agenda presenting on uh, school accountability uh, with uh, Dr. Mosello and Ms. Farage. So when I say this, I'm also, which we did when Etzel Ford came off the priority list, if you recall, you know, we were happy with the scores and the movement, but we also said that we uh, championed the work that was done at Etzel Ford by the staff, the students, the local community, and that was the real reason for the turnaround. But then we do get these metrics that come out from the state or from the school resource reform office that are not always reliable data sets. And we, I presented on that in November, and so did uh, Dr. Patterson. And so it's one of the measures, and that's why we are gonna continue to advocate for a multiple measures approach of assessment and in fact Dr. Patterson and I have talked about that so just so that teachers know that we're committed to multiple measures of course we have the state accountability measures we have to we're, we're required by law but we have other things like NWA formative assessment school improvement process uh, trustee Thorpe you joined us last week for one of the school improvement visits that creates an internal accountability of sharing information. So I wanted the teachers to know that and the parents, because I am hearing the things out there um, of information and some of the anxiety that comes with some of these testing from both staff and students and parents for that matter. Um, so when I preface this, I do want to congratulate uh, our STEM, STEM school in Becker that uh, were in the top percentile in the state as reward schools. And we also have Fortson that was rated by um, an outside group as one of the top 20 high schools in the state, again, using different multiple measures. So I, do, I, I preface it in those ways, but we are proud not only of those schools, but all the schools in Dearborn, because really this is about a team working together in a learning community. And that's the way I think our board and our administration approaches it. And so uh, congratulations to them moving forward. And again, we're gonna move on those multiple measure approach. I also, again, I told you it's gonna be a little longer this morning, or this afternoon. Um, communication. Uh, I sent out communication on some of the events that were occurring you know, nationally, and really, it was in response, but it was really the things that we do in Dearborn, the positive things that we stand for, the core values. And so a letter went out. We also sent out what we called talking points to principals. Uh, so they could use it so that if we do have students that are having different anxieties or they feel different ways that our staff can respond to it. And so I just want to reiterate that we do have a lot of positive going in Dearborn. Um, we had the Martin Luther King 
uh, real Dearborn Peace March that occurred, uh, real positive. We had a lot of trustees that were there. Uh, we had uh, the pro public education rally here. Again, very positive, saying these are the values that we stand for. We also had a Korematsu Day celebration at Fortson that was very positive, um, where we really recognized some of the Japanese internment after World War II. And that, that event was actually scheduled months ago, and it was created by our students. Our students are actually initiating all of these different events. Now, I will say the one, the rally for pu pro public education was initiated more by the union admi administration, but the students got heavily involved. So these are the things that we stand for. And I do want to read a couple of things. Um, you know, these are the things that we reiterate to our students. You know, we do live in a great nation. Our country is founded on a system of checks and balances that ensure that no one branch of government has all the power. Within the legislative branch of government, two separate groups of representatives must approve any type of new law before sending it to the president for approval. Our judicial branch of government provides another check on the system. Laws are often brought to the courts to check constitutionality of the law, and in some cases, laws will not be enforced until the courts all the way to the Supreme Court. So we do have a system of checks and balances constitutionally. We have sent this out to our principals. And, you know, there has been different adverse times in the, in the country. The other thing I just want to stress is align with our core values and all the positive things we do. You know, I've read this before, I've put it out on my blog, and I want to clearly make this statement here at the, the board meeting. You know, we at Dearborn Public Schools ensure an equal and rigorous education for all students, no matter race, religion, ethnicity, or immigration status. In alignment with the spirit of de the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, we are committed to each and every child to continue our practice and our commitment, regardless of religious beliefs or ethnic background. We are steadfast in our commitment because students come first. This statement is in accordance with the Durham Public Schools strategic plan that was approved by the Board of Education. And those of you that see me out there, you see that we are bringing the students first live and vibrant into schools. We're out there. Right now it may be a sign, but it really is um, a routine and a normal procedure that we go through in the district. The Board of Education has supported that. The Board has led with the approval of the strategic plan. And so we're going to continue to put students first. And that's why I'm going to say to you, all these great events with our Student Advisory Council, it actually makes me very proud to be superintendent of the Dearborn Schools. When I see these students, they're not coming in for any negativity. What they're doing is they're saying, look, this is what we stand for. These are our positive values. And they're saying, we are going to make a difference. We want our voice to be heard. And that's what I'm doing with my advisory council. I'm listening to the students. Uh, we recently had a, a great event. And I know, uh, Trustee Barry, you were there at uh, McCullough Eunice, uh, where it was Inauguration Day. And to see the empowerment of the students and, and the, the vibrancy of that, yes, they can make a difference. Because we are investing in them. We are supporting our students because we know they're our future. And so I'm very proud again to be here and to be working with all these great trustees on the board. So I just wanted to get that um, out there publicly. And I also want to say publicly that, you know, a lot of times it was really nice, I thought, at the, at the last meeting when we had a parent come forward and, you know, some might be thinking, oh, where's the, is there going to be a complaint or something come forward? You might think that. And they came back and really complimented the Board of Education for the work done. And a lot of times you hear the different issues that come forward, but I know that us as administrators and the board, we work together. We want what's best for the students. We're going to continue to do that. We're going to advocate. We're going to continue to advocate for student achievement. And we're going to continue to do what we feel is right based on our strategic plan and our values. And so it is nice. The other night we did get a few real positive things. Positive because it's talking about the great things that our students are doing. Uh, we had a multicultural project over at Fortson where students uh, from another city in the state came and, and, uh, and were involved in this project. And that district sent us such a positive email about the great things that were going on within that project. And it's just one representation of you know, the empowerment of students. So um, you know, I did make it a little longer today, but I feel strongly about all those comments. And I, again, I appreciate the support of everyone here in the board. And the one thing I can say about that one letter from the teacher was that that was our former student yeah. who moved to another community and shared with this community who maybe had a different perception or, or didn't have any kind of a, uh, a good uh, feel for what Dearborn was. She carried the message as a graduate of Dearborn High to her new um, location and brought them back over here to visit with us and, and then they shared their um life 
with with the Fortson students and are and are equally welcoming f for um, them to come out and visit them. So that this is the type of positive relationships that um, we represent, and that we hope that all of our, um, our students are, leave this community with, so that they can move this um, forward a as a real way to uh, build those bridges that we so desperately need right now. And with that too, I could say there's a lot of hope. There really is. I always going to say I see that glass half full, never half empty. And to me, that makes me hopeful when I see the students engage in those kind of projects, and they are going to make a difference. So thank you for your commentary as well. And if I can just add, they're engaged because of the initiatives that you're taking with them, which is absolutely wonderful. And I do want to say I sincerely appreciate the letter you sent out to the community. It's important that we understand we're all part of this 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 district, this city, this nation, and this world, and we all have to learn to work with each other and accept each other and also comfort each other in moments mm -hmm. of uncertainty. And I really thought that that letter was something that you did, and so I, I uh, really appreciated that. Thank you. That. Next item on the agenda. Well, citizen participation, but we don't have any blue cards, so we will move along to approval of minutes. Approval of minutes of the following Dearborn Board of Education meeting, annual organizational meeting, January 9th, 2017, Board Report 1663, the regular P-12 meeting, January 9th, 2017, Board Report 1664. Make any necessary corrections and move approval of these minutes. So moved. Any discussion? May I attach a unanimous affirmative? Yeah. Motion carries. Next Recognition item. and acknowledgments. Commendations. Uh, the commendations will be read by Fortson High School freshman Daniela Florier and Mohammed Juni. Hello. Um, commendations to all of the students from Dearborn High, Fortson, and Etzel Ford who participated in the Michigan F School Vocal Music Association. District 12 Solo and Ensemble Music Festival on February 4 at Eastern Michigan University. Participating Dearborn High Choir members all scored first division ratings qualifying them to compete in the state solo ensemble. Congratulations to Katie Garber, Sam Joshim, Emily Robinson, Maria Viscami, and all of the vocalists in the DHS Men's Ensemble. Special thanks to accompanist Lucy Thatcher and private vocal teacher Karen Evans. From Etzel Ford High School, the following students earned first division rating, which qualifies them to compete in the state solo and ensemble competition in April where Catherine, were Catherine Dix, Alyssa Cauldron, Nora Hayton, and Laduria Avery. Laduria earned a perfect score. Congratulations. Congratulations to the following Etzel Ford vocalists who earned second division ratings, Elizabeth Dix, Elizabeth Dix Oscar Vasquez, and Mohamed Said. Mohammed's score was high enough to qualify him to compete in the state solo and ensemble competition. Thank you to accompanist Sarah Ju Jack Jack Beck. Two choirs from Fortson also competed as solo and ensemble. Congratulations to the 13 girls in the Jamelia Ensemble who earned a first division rating and the nine boys in the Cantus Ensemble who received a second division rating. Congratulations to all of the students and thank you to vocal music teacher Car Caramel Atkins, Robert Doyle, and Matt Laura, and the musicians who accompany the vocalist. Commendations to Nadra Shami, language and literacy SIOP trainer, who was recently recognized for her dedication to provide to providing support to educators, language learners, and their families. Ms. Shami was featured educator for the month of February by WIDA, a national organization that advances academic language development and academic achievement 
for children and youth who are culturally and linguistically diverse through high quality standards, assessments, research, and professional learning for educators. Commendations to Danine Charles, Dearborn Public Schools Coordinator for Effective Education Schools, who was one of three people to receive 2016 Health Communities Champion Award for their outstanding efforts to promote healthy living in Dearborn. Ms. Charles was recognized for her leadership on the Healthy Dearborn Schools team, which focuses on improving the health and wellness of Dearborn school children. Additional Dearborn Public Schools employees who serve on the Healthy Dearborn Coalition are Mary Pelichkoff, Board Trustee, Jim, Jim Tharp, Thor, uh, Board Trustee, Leela Amen, District Community Liaison, Jeff Murphy, Supervision, Supervisor Food Services, Mary Baker, Retired Dearborn Public Schools Nurse, and David Mustonen, Director Communications. Congratulations to Danin, Danin, Charles, and thank you to all who are working to promote healthy living to improve the overall health of Dearborn residents. Commend, commendations to the following principals and their staff for their efforts in hosting a team of researchers from the American Institutions for Research. Dearborn was asked to participate in the study that looked at the practices of schools who receive federal Title I dollars. Title I funds are used to provide needed educational services to students who are identified as at risk. Commendations to the following principals. Oh wait, sorry. The visiting team gave high price to the schools and started and shared the following comment. We were truly impressed with the work you are doing in Dearborn on Title I. The strong <coughs> emphasis on calibration, collaboration, school anatomy, oh no, wait, auto, autonomy, and attention to data and effective practice, practices for school improvement are wonderful to see and not at all typically. We're excited to share your story. Thank you, Danielle. And uh, first, I'd like to apologize if I pronounced any of the names wrong. So. Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> the schools that took part were Maples Elementary, uh, Principal Donna Jakubik, Henry Ford Early College, Principal Majid Fadlola, Dearborn High School, Principal Adam Martin. Special thanks to Rose Aldubaili, uh, Dearborn Compensatory Education and English Learners and Fatme Faraj, Dearborn School Improvement and their staff for all the hard work and effort that was done to coordinate the visit. Michael Berry Career Center. Commendations to Myron Kuriliuk, Building Engineer at Michael Berry Center for his outstanding hospitality and assistance to Dearborn High School students and parents who were at the school to film scenes for a student movie production. Dearborn Center of Mass Science and Technology. Congratulations to DCMSC students Ariana Rudolph, Selena Ali, and Miriam Cork Maz, who were awarded a $400 grant after completing the grant request in their AP Environmental Science class. The mini grant of $400 was issued to the nonprofit nonprofit organization Peace, Love, and the and Planet. This grant money will be util, util, utilized towards Michael Berry Center's re recycling project to build the hy hydroponic drip irrigation system under the supervision of AP Environmental Science teacher Ms. Tuba Mansour. STEM Middle School. Commendations to STEM Middle School students who earned specialty awards for the innovative technolo technological ideas that they, were, they presented in the recent Future City competition. Sixth and seventh grade students on the team named STEMPIRE received the Electro Technology Award from the Institute of Electri Electrical and Electronics Engineer South Southeast Michigan Chapter. Eighth grade students on the team titled Midgard received the Architectural Engineer of an Integrated High Performing City Award from Lawrence Technological University. Congratulations as well to their leader, to their teacher, Jennifer Gleason. 
Salina, Salina Inter Intermediate. Commendations to the staff of Salina Intermediate for hosting a team of educators from Sports Creek Middle, Middle School. During their visit to observe and learn how Salina Intermediate has implemented the AVID program, AVID program. The program is used to close the achievement gap by preparing students for college and other post-secondary opportunities. A letter from the Swartz Creek team leader included the following comment. The crucial ingredient that you have for student success is clearly, clearly the positive culture that has been cul cul cultivated at Salina Intermediate. The committed staff, symbols of, higher edu symbols of higher education and school pride makes this a special school for students who know the staff are genuinely, genuinely, genuinely vested in their ultimate success in life beyond Sal Salina Intermediate. Fortson High School. Commendations to the Fortson High School wrestling team and, jo and coach Jeff Ball for their fifth straight district championship. The team who also was an undefeated league championship champion this season. Commendations to the Fortson Key Club and, and club sponsor Zainab Zreek for their efforts to collect 300 pairs of shoes for the Eliminate Project. Through the Eliminate Project, Kiwanis International and UNICEF have joined forces to eliminate maternal and ne neonatal te tetanus, a deadly disease that seals the lives of 34 innocent babies and a significant number of women each year. Every 25 pairs donated saves the lives of five babies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will say that those students who volunteer in the middle of the year have much more of a challenge <laughs> of, of a lot of commendations than at the beginning of the year. <laughs> I'd say it took Dr. Mead an entire year to get your last name correct. I'm not quite sure he's got it yet. <laughs> Petlitchkoff. <laughs> Petlitchkoff. And, and I expect you to call me Miati. <laughs> uh, great job. Acknowledgement of donations. Okay, we do have a long list. Again, the long list of uh, accommodations, which is a great thing, and donations, which helps our students in our school district. So we have a donation of $250 that's been offered to Bryant Middle School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for brunch with an artist. Donation of $298 has been offered to Bryant Middle School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for academic games, trophies, and ribbons. A do donation of 6000 has been offered to Dearborn High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for an uh, inauguration field trip. A donation of 200 has been offered to Hague Elementary School by Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for classroom books. A donation of $1,000 has been offered to Fortune <coughs> High School by Dearborn, the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for Do the Math. A donation of $252.87 has been offered to Henry Ford Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for math workshop. A donation of 250 has been offered to Lori School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for Art Explores Clay. A donation of $200 has been offered to Nowlin Elementary by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for leveled classroom books. A donation of $2,000 has been offered to Dearborn High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for model UN conferences. A donation of $100 has been offered to the Early Learning Coalition by Commercial Indi Industrial Services to be used for books for babies. A donation of $250 has been offered to the Early Learning Coalition by Jeffrey and Kathleen Stryker Clark to be used for books for babies. A donation of $500 has been offered to the Early Learning Coalition by Trinity Incorporated to be used for books for babies. A donation of $100 has been offered to the Early Learning Coalition by Lower Huron Supply Company to be used for books for babies. A donation of $50 has been offered to the Early Learning Coalition by KTEC Environmental Consultants, Inc. to be used for books for babies. A donation of $25 has been offered to the Early Learning Coalition by Fort St. Cleaners to be used for books for babies. A donation of 200 new backpacks has been offered to the Dearborn Public Schools by Five and Below to be used for our families in transition. A donation of $1,500 has been offered to Fort St. High School by Michigan Fuels to be used for the, be for the benefit of the school community. Donation of $1,000 has been offered to Stout Middle School by Michigan Fuels to be used for the benefit of the school community. 
A donation of $1,000 has been offered to McDonnell Elementary School by Michigan Fuels to be used for the benefit of the school community. A donation of $1,000 has been offered to Oakland Elementary School by Michigan Fuels to be used to benefit the school community. A donation of $1,000 has also been offered to Becker Elementary by Michigan Fuels for the same purpose. And a donation of $1,000 has been offered uh, to Maples Elementary School by Michigan Fuels. Uh, two more, actually. We have $1,000 that's been donated from Michigan Fuels to William Ford Elementary School and for to benefit the school community. And as well, $1,000 has been offered to Etzel Ford uh, High School by Michigan Fuels to be used to benefit the school community. I can say, too, uh, first of all, appreciate all the donors, obviously a long list. Uh, you know, we appreciate everyone, real good causes, and I happened to be at the one when Michigan Fuels came and, and actually the mayor was there and we had other, uh, uh, the chief of police and other uh, administrators are there just to, you know, they wanted to positively just contribute to the school. So uh, we appreciate the Education Foundation and all of our donors that are on the list and we, every, every month it seems to get, become a, a longer list, so it does help, so thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda. Other. No other.